Okay, let's do a review of the incredibly expensive uh, Nikkor, which I've been out testing today. I even did some fascinating micro contrast tests. By the way, if you're a black and white shooter at all, how important is micro contrast? Um, it's kind of important as having being able to see when it comes to driving. Yeah, it's that important. Um, the lens actually turned out to be worse than I thought. It's got two interesting attributes. Well, one that I knew that would be there. I compared it here. And this is just a straight black and white conversion. You can check the files. I'll post the link below. Now, you think the one on the right, superficially, someone would think, is uh, just a little bit uh, differently exposed. One on the right looks a little brighter. If you are actually able to notice, is that it is more washed out and it has less detail, less micro contrast. The one on the left is the 105 F2 DC Nikkor. Okay, let's uh, take a look. And this is a um, a resurrection plant, by the way. Uh, things that actually have a lot of intertonal detail are perfect for doing micro contrast testing on. Um, you'll see how washed out the one on the right is versus on the left. That's not a different exposure. They both have the exact same um, histogram on the camera. Well, extremely close. In other words, one is not uh, exposed more than the other. I've also got the uh, the files, which have just been converted to a black and white. So, the micro contrast, which is no surprise, this is a 14-element lens, made in China, made out of plastic, $2,200. Oh, by the way, do you know what's different about me as opposed to the other top 20 people that would ever mention this on YouTube? They hotlink the purchase of this lens. Ultimately, they have a stake in the game. They would like you to purchase this because they get kickbacks. Let's see who get ki gets kickbacks when you click on an Amazon or a camera store link. Yeah, those people are getting kickbacks. I don't. You know, I don't care what you buy. I don't make a penny regardless of whether you buy a cheap lens or an expensive lens. Oh man, mm. this lens actually ended up having a really surprising characteristic and not in a good way. Now I thought there might be some swirly bokeh, but there is a lot of swirly bokeh on the lens and I've got the examples up here. Not a really wide lens like this. I mean, take a look at it. I mean, it's absolutely ginormous. It's a 2.2 pounds basically, 14 elements. It's absolutely titanic. I point out, not only does it have cat's eye bokeh, you, you, if you take a look at the pictures, you'll see it. that's actually a crop. But uh, all of these, uh, these uh, pics are straight out of camera, totally 100% unedited, untouched, uh, taken on uh, the Nikon D810. If you actually see here, you'll actually see the swirly bokeh. <sighs> this lens with two factors make it what I call a washing machine lens. What the hell is a washing machine lens? It's when you look at the picture you feel like your head's in one of those old-time washing machines going back and forth because of two reasons. If you see actually up here on the right you'll see cat's eye bokeh combined with the fact that there is a lot of a swirly bokeh, you know swirly bokeh like a Petzval which is a pretty cheap Russian lens Really, really fast lenses, even some good ones, are, uh, uh, are uh, notorious for having some swirly bokeh. That's where all the bokeh kind of, if you, if you slightly unfocus your eyes, you'll see that everything around the main subject is, is coming around it in a circle. Well, this one not only has swirly bokeh, it's got a lot of damn swirly bokeh, and you can see it in the images. Um... Really bad micro contrast, very poor color saturation. If you actually take a look at this picture, and by the way, all these pictures, other than the black and white conversions, all of these pictures are completely straight out of camera. They are totally unedited. Nothing went straight from the SD card into the computer, uploaded onto Flickr. If you actually, what do they call this is a milky image. Now people, this is very typical of like a, a Sigma lens poor color saturation. If you actually unfocus your eyes slightly and you'll be able to see this, once you recognize it in the photographs you'll see, oh god I've always noticed that, I never liked it and I never know what it was. That is called poor bandwidth. Poor bandwidth means poor color saturation. 
It means too much of uh, the vibrant colors. I took a picture. It was really, really boring of this basically neon green fire hydrant. I didn't upload it. I guess I'll have to upload it. And the thing turned out basic green. I mean, this fire hydrant was neon green, but it turned out basic green. And it's like, that's confirmation. I knew immediately, even chimping on the back of the LCD, man, the swirly bouquet is horrible. I mean, of all the lens reviews that I've, uh, people that have reviewed this lens, now I knew it would have at f1.4, it would have some swirly bouquet. Swirly bokeh. It is bad swirly bokeh. Here's the problems with the lens. Consequence of the clipped light, uh, the clipped uh, shape of the light pass uh, going through the oblique angles. It not only has cat's eye bokeh, but it has bad swirly bokeh, which is basically spherical aberration. This overpriced $2,200 plastic Chinese lens has bad cat's eye bokeh. That's not my opinion. That's a hardcore damn fact. Hardcore fact. You can see it right there. This is a crop. It's cat's eye bokeh. When you have cat's eye bokeh... Now, actually, I have don't have an issue with swirly bokeh in a sense. If it's a cheap Russian lens, swirly bokeh actually looks really lovely for some stuff. I like swirly bokeh. Do you know what is bad? It's kind of like you don't drink orange juice and eat a steak. Them by themselves are fine. But when you combine cat's eye bokeh and swirly bokeh, what you have are nauseating pictures. Nauseating. I had no idea. Of all the sample pictures, of which there are not many from this 105 F14 um, Nikkor out there, I did not see any sample shots that show that it had really bad swirly bouquet, and it does. I mean, it's just, it's hideous. Here's where you can really see it. You can see everything up here if you actually take a look at the shot. Everything is swirling around the main subject. Perfect concentric circles. Um, I've got a few more examples of that uploaded. Um, this lens in, is natively magenta shift, which means it uh, is blocking out green light. If you're shooting in uh, low light, I was uh, shooting a kitty cat with white fur, and I shot some other white stuff in low light. It is horribly magenta shifted. RGB, CMY, red, green, blue, cyan, magenta, yellow. When you got too much magenta, that means that the lens is sucking up. The, 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 there's the two most powerful uh, light frequencies that pass through a lens, a visible light that we see. Blue is number one. Right underneath that, very, very close, is green. It means this lens, through its 14 elements, is sucking up the green light. Yeah, and that's why things are uh, white. Things that should be white under the correct white balance are magenta shifted. No bueno. This lens actually ended up being uh, substantially worse than I expected. I'm really good at manual focus. I was not using this in manual focus. I was using it in single point uh, lock uh, at uh, f uh, at uh, f 1.4. And I could see why even some of the Nikon uh, ambassador photographs, they posted and heralded up like, oh, these are some beautiful bits. Like one is a picture of an African-American dude. His nose is in focus. His eyes are totally out of focus. It's like, why did you even post that picture? The depth of field is insanely shallow. It's hard to nail. It's like boom, 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 boom. It's like you just keep stabbing until you hit it. And this is under good lighting conditions. Under good lighting conditions. And don't even think about manually focusing at f1.4. I don't care how mad your skills are at manual focus, and I've got mad skills. Better than most of you people's skills. Sorry. I think that's a brag or egotistical. It's still the truth. i got better skills than you do at manual focus, but still nailing 1.4 with this lens is forget about it. Manual focus, no way. So the camera should be able to do it, and I was using it with a D810. D810 is not a fast autofocus lens, but it doesn't have to be. This is a portraiture lens. This is not an action lens. Wow, talk about... Let's try. Let's stab and hit and miss and hit and Wow. A lot of shots were hit and miss. In other words, it's like it takes six shots to nail the correct focus point. And this is single point, small as block, autofocus tracking, stationary subject. Forget about this moving cat. Let me, let me ask you, and this cat was only moving like about 1.5 miles per hour through the garden, wherever the hell the damn cat is. It's here somewhere. Uh, I've got that dumb cat walking through the garden somewhere. There he is. I mean, th this, I mean, the cat is literally going one mile an hour. And I kept, uh, you know, pegging his ear. And it literally, it took, and I've got good skills. <laughs> this cat's moving really slowly. It's, wow. Like only one shot in 10 at F1.4. And he's about 15, 20 feet away. 
was correct. So, no bueno. That's infuriating. And all the idiots out there that said, well, you know, you could stop this lens down to f2, or f3.5, uh, or f4. But anybody that says that's a moron, because that means that you pay $2,200 for f1.4 real estate that you don't use. It's kind of like buying a, a $100 million apartment complex, but only living in the penthouse. It's like, why did you pay? Why didn't you just buy the penthouse? You know, you, you've got all this extra real estate you're not using. Well, you know, I, I don't know. It's just big. You know, I own it all. That's kind of like Donald Trump mentality, right? You know, he'd buy the whole building, but leave the rest of it vacant. <laughs> I mean, but if you're doing that with this lens, then, you know, you are an idiot like that because you're... You're using an F1.4 lens that you paid a ton of money for. It's like all these idiots out there that are driving these hardcore four-wheel drive cars that never, ever leave the pavement. Same sort of stupidity. That is who this lens is going to appeal to. The same morons that buy, it's like, I want these things, uh, one of these Jeep jobbies or whatever that can climb the side of a mountain in four-wheel drive and it's got a winch on the front. And the only thing they use it for is going to the grocery store and commuting back and forth to work. Stupid. Epic stupid. The people that buy this lens have that exact same stupid mentality. I had no idea that this lens would have really bad swirly bokeh. You can even see it on this 15-foot shot where we don't actually have light. We have some speculars off the leaves, but where you can really see the bad swirly bokeh is when you actually have the specular light coming through the back. You can also see it here. It's, this lens is nauseating at f1.4. And anybody that says, well, what about at f2, f4? Who gives a damn? If it's only good at f2, then get an f2 DC Nikkor. And which, by the way, I just got done an hour ago testing the micro contrast, as I started out with here. Micro contrast is radically different. Over here is the f2 DC Nikkor. Over here is this lens, the f1. Both of them are shot at the same aperture at f8, by the way. Same exposure, both perfectly exposed, and this one looks brighter, but it's not. It just has less micro contrast. It actually has a lot less micro contrast. To the pedestrian eye, this looks slightly more exposed. It's not. It's less intertonal detail. The reason this one looks grayer and slightly darker, it's not darker. It has more intertonal detail. That's what we call micro contrast, girlfriend. Yes. It's got bad micro contrast. It has a bad milky film, which is, uh, I call it milky film, which is a poor bandwidth and color saturation. This is a true washing machine lens. It takes the uh, best qualities of a Pets ball, which I don't mind swirly bokeh, but if you combine swirly bokeh with cat's eye bokeh, you have a nauseating lens. If you have perfect bubble bokeh, you know, spherical bokeh, 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 whatever, tomato, tomato, potato, potato and you give it a, a swirly bokeh, that looks beautiful. Cat's eye bokeh with swirly bokeh? No. Those don't go together. That is, now this is an art form. Someone might out there, out there like that, but generally speaking, most human beings find that nauseating. Um, the resolution is perfectly fine. And that's all most fools care about. Uh, resolution is fine. It's 14 elements, 2.2 pounds. This lens is $2,200. Let me tell you what. If this lens, and I'm being serious as a heart attack, trust me on this one. If this lens were $800, far less than half, and it's made in China, by the way. Made, right back here, made in China. And it's all plastic. If this lens were $800, I still, not even a snowflake's chance in hell, would even dare consider buying this lens. Even if it were $800. Nikon, you des Nikon, Nikon, oh, and that man, Nikon. You should be ashamed of yourself, Nikon. But just like all the people buying four-wheel drives that only drive them on the pavement, Nikon will sell these things to the same sort of idiots that to buy four-wheel drives that only, you know, hit the streets with them. Oh, my God, it's big. I have to have it. Bigger is better. Look how different the micro contrast. Like I said, this is a resurrection plant. These are both the exact same. You see how bleached and how it looks like it's lighter. It's not. It's a lack of inner tonal detail. Micro contrast. That is what makes black and white images. If you're a black and white photographer, all I did was do a black and white conversion here. If you're a black and white photographer and you don't know what micro contrast is, then you, whew, you, you've got an issue. 
That is why micro con when it comes to black and white photography, you're like, why don't my images pop? I got this really expensive lens. Yeah, but that lens, that really expensive lens has bad micro contrast. There it is, clear as day. Clear as day. It's even worse than I thought it would be. Um, by the way, I'll remind you that I have all the evidence in the world and a bunch of my other viewers. We caught this. I'm the first one that caught it, and I made a video about it like two months ago. We caught the Nikon ambassador that, that had pictures from this lens uploaded to his Flickr page. I caught him because I had multiple browsers open. I caught him manipulating his own images and swapping, do, using a switcheroo on them. And I had like an emergency, emergency if you will, um, uh, live stream and we all saw it going on. I have like hundreds and hundreds of witnesses. Even the Nikon ambassador that was taking images, even he didn't like it. He so radically altered them in Photoshop. He changed the saturation. He changed the clarity. These images from this lens are flat as hell. They're flat as pancakes. They're dull, poor bandwidth. They, they just, I'm oh, sorry, compared to a really good lens like the F2 DC Nikkor, which is far less than half the price. That lens is made in Japan out of metal. This is made out of plastic in China. That's not to say that some great prime lenses stamp Nikkor on them don't uh, roll out of China. There's some that do. I'm not impugning China on absolutely. This is as flat as hell. If you know what to look for, you can see the loss, uh, the absence, not the loss, the absence of uh, bandwidth on this lens. Because over the entire image, there is a thin, milky film. And that milky film is poor bandwidth, or what the common uh, goof would call uh, color saturation. On a scale of 1 to 10, even if cost were of no importance, let's just say rate the lens regardless of what the hell it costs, I would give this lens like a 4 out of 10. You know, it, not even knowing what it costs, it's like, you know, here's this lens evaluated on a scale of 1 to 10, what does this lens rank at? A 4. I don't know what, what it costs, I have no idea what it costs. I do know what it costs, but that's what I'd give it, I'd give a 4 out of 10. Knowing what it costs, knowing also that it has bad, worse micro contrast than I expected, and it has cat's eye bokeh and swirly bokeh at f1.4, really bad swirly bokeh, and knowing what it costs, I actually rate this. You can't rate it a two because two is like junk and one is like a Minolta trash or Sigma junk. Uh, you know, I you know, I have to be logical about this and not say something that is emotional you know on a scale of one to ten i have to drop it one further i'd actually love to drop it down to a two or a one but i know what two and one lenses are they're like they're they're bad lenses i don't know if like nikon decided to hire some people like from petsval or something to give it swirly cat's eye bouquet even petsval isn't stupid enough to make swirly bouquet with cat's eye bo bokeh they have spherical or bubble bokeh. Bubble bokeh and a swirly bokeh is kind of beautiful. It is. It's kind of beautiful. This is not. This this lens is Nikon should be ashamed of itself. And uh, But hey, if you like it, buy it. Because guess what? I don't make a dime regardless of what you buy. Okay? I did a thorough test on this lens. And believe it or not, I actually shocked myself because this lens ended up being worse worse than I actually expected it to be. I mean, totally serious uh, as a heart attack. It, it turned out to be worse than I thought. Okay? So that's it. That's a complete review of the Nikkor uh, 105 F14. Thanks for watching. Okay?